The Wi-Fi went down in my office. Right, and... Here we go. Hey, Wait last minute. Minute, gents, it's Nick and oh, Tristan my... here. We've got oh, Rachel Adams. And this is the second time we've had Rachel Adams. It's a huge blessing. Thank you, Rachel. Thank and you. I wanted to give a quick intro as to who Rachel is, just in case you don't know. Uh, Rachel Adams leads a sales division for the, how is it, Atchins, Atchison and oh my Adams? Gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, perfect, because I'm terrible. <laughs> Over at Keller Williams Realty, and she's currently ranked in the top 1% of all realtors in uh, Placer and Sacramento counties. And her team's going to close. Are you still on set to close over $50 million this year? Yeah, about 50 Nice. Amazing. And to think that you just started, what, oh, about three years ago or so? Four years, yeah. I'm in my fourth year now. That's so crazy. <laughs> um, so she's absolutely amazing. Uh, just We've got about an hour with her now. We've got uh, some great questions. And Don't mind me. I'm just sharing the video in all sorts of different places on the social media. Problem. I know. We see your back. Yeah, we see your back, man. We see your back. So, I've been doing the last one. So, you're usually out of Sacramento, but today you're where? I'm uh, I'm at Irish Beach. I'm actually at a um, vacation beach house with my family. Uh, brought my boyfriend and my parents and his parents here, and we just hung out all weekend and drank wine and had lots of carbs, and it was great. <laughs> Super sweet. All yeah. right. So before you go, before we get started, do you want to uh, say anything? Uh, I'm just stoked to be here. I appreciate you guys having me. I think um, they say the average mega agent is a student out of the year 52 days. So that means once a week they're committed to furthering their education and I personally think that's super important. So I applaud all of you out there for um, taking time to invest back in yourself because it will reflect in your business and in your personal life too. Cool. All right. That's very important. You're wearing your sport and some Pokemon, I see. <laughs> well, yeah, I was wondering how many agents out there have downloaded the Pokemon Go app. Uh, <laughs> I would not be one of those. Rachel, Rachel's playing it on the beach. <laughs> so listen, let's just jump right into it. I just want to say that, first of all, Rachel, I was telling Rachel before that, like, she's one of the most structured and time-blocked people I've ever met in my life. Like, no joke. If I want to get her on the phone, she's like, okay, I have time between like 2.34 and 2.58. Like, I swear, like, that's exactly what it's like. It's it's really hard to, to get into her schedule because it's so tight, but I, I really respect that about her. Um, and later we're going to talk about Rachel's new 10-week um, MAPS course called Limited to Legendary. Um, we're going to talk about how she – and that's going to talk about – you know how she's how she has gotten to where she is in just under four years. I mean, Rachel, talk about you know year one, how many deals you closed up till now, and just kind of brief us on the course a little bit. But we'll get back into it a little bit later on. Yeah. Um, so I got into real estate uh, in 2012, and um, as a lot of you guys know, I was working a full time job, and I was. Um, definitely the safety zone because it was salary based so I knew how much money is coming in um, but what I don't think people realize that also hinders you so you can kind of say well it's safe I know how much money is coming in and yet you can never you know have this massive caps massive growth in your income because your commission or your salary base so for me shifting over to real estate was I didn't want to have a cap on how much money I could make I ended up, um, my first year I was got into real estate, I was in a pretty unhealthy marriage and uh, I was, people say they're paycheck to paycheck, I was paycheck behind a paycheck. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, what did you do before real estate? What was your last job? Um, well, before I got my license, I was managing a real estate office um, and then before that I was uh, working at a leasing office um, doing apartments and then kind of the marketing and everything for them. And then previous to that, um, worked for the Sacramento Kings. That's our basketball um, team for Sacramento. I uh, did marketing for them. And then I did marketing for a winery. So I definitely like the – I believe in finding something you're passionate about and then just sharing it. So you like to drink wine, so that must have been a really good match. <laughs> I think I do, man. It was rude. brutal. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk a little bit about. We're going to jump into limited to legendary later, but some of the things, some of the, some of the subjects that are in this ten week course are, um, you know, you're going to start with 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 mindset, brand awareness, mastering your database, 
marketing on social media, and all these things have really um, you played a huge part in in your success. So, like, can you tell me um, a little bit about, or tell the group a little bit about when you really got down and dirty with your with your structure and your time blocking? Yeah. Um, well, I okay. So you asked earlier about my my kind of amount of transactions I did. So my first year in the business, oh, I, yeah, no, 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 you're all good. I we're we're all realtors, so we'll be here and here and here. I'm sure. Oh, um, totally. Five minutes also. Um, so I my first year in the business, I did 39 transactions. Um, second year, I did 109, and then it was 123 units. Um, and now in my fourth year, uh, and, and we'll probably end up doing like around 160, I'd say is safe. Um, and, and really like the time blocking that, that became apparent pretty quickly because I feel like when you get into real estate, you get your business card and then you're like, okay, I'm ready to real estate. But it's like, what do you do? What do you, call? What do you say when you call? Uh, and so for me, like I immediately realized that if I wanted to be a top producer, then I had to think like a top producer and act like a top producer and do the things the top producer were doing. And so I started to shadow top producers. I actually went to my office and I asked um, for the people that were in the top 20% of production and I just went to them and I said, hey, can I shadow you for a day? Um, and you realize that these people who are mega agents and doing have running these big businesses, they're not watching, you know, YouTube videos of cats running around a room at two PM in the afternoon, which yeah, we all know. I told you. <laughs> it's not that bad, okay. No. <laughs> but you know, you just I, I realized quickly that you know, being aware of how I was spending my time was really important. And so in the course, um, we have a way kind of for people to figure out, they talk about the, in Keller Williams, we talk about the 80-20 rule. And if you have 100% of your day, 20% um, of your day is money-making activities, and the other 80% is usually stuff you can leverage out. So we have a way that you can kind of figure out what exactly your 80-20 is. So, you know, that leads me to asking you, how do you figure out your 80-20? Because since time blocking is a huge part of your business, how do you do that? Well, you know, the, the easiest way I can tell you to do it to start is to actually catalog what you're doing for two full days. This talks, I mean, what time do you wake up in the morning? How many times do you hit snooze? Do you get up and <laughs> do you get up and exercise? How long are you exercising? Do you have to get your kids ready in the morning? How long does that take? Getting breakfast. What are you having for breakfast? How long does that take? How long is your commute? You know, do you hit traffic? Do you allow for traffic? Like you literally are cataloging everything you're doing for two full days. And then when you're in the office, like being really, really honest and real about what you're doing in the office and how you're spending your time and who you're spending your time with, what time you leave the office. You know, do does your lunch take half an hour? Does it take an hour? Does it take two hours? And so at the end of these two days, you kind of go back to your calendar and you look at how you're spending your time. And then you circle. Or you can, I use a green highlighter because green is money to me. It represents money. So I actually just highlight with a green pen what are these 20, what are the things that are actually making me money? What are my money making activities? And then I look at all the rest of the way I've been spending my time. Obviously, family and stuff like that counts first and is different, right? But if you're actually looking at where your 20% is of your day, then the 80% are the things that you could potentially leverage out. And for me, that ended up being me creating a job description, which was amazing because I was like, gosh, I don't know how to hire an admin. I don't know where to start. And yet, one thing that happened is I spent, um, I got a call from a seller who was upset and they needed a lockbox put on their property. So I left my office, got the lockbox, drove to put the lockbox on the property, probably took me like half an hour, couldn't find the shackle code, that took me 20 minutes to figure that out, you know, we all know how that goes, um, get back to the car 45 minutes, before I knew it, that's two hours of my time. Now, if you look at your hour, how much your time is worth, you look at how much money you make in the year, how many days you work that year, you know, um, and you can figure out your hourly rate. Well, at that time, my hourly rate, hourly rate was $189. So, mm. ouch, yeah. right? Wow. Now, what I found is I hired a runner, and I mind you, I was gone for two hours, so call that like 400 bucks, round up, right? So $400, if I hired a runner, they're $25 per task. So now, that 200 bucks is $25, 
I leveraged it out and now I have more time back in my day. So it's like those are the things when you're actually cataloging what you're doing with your time, you realize that there are things you can leverage out to someone else and that your time matters. And the number one thing that's most important for us as real estate agents is to be lead generating and building relationships. We are a relationship based business and by the way, we just happen to be in the business of buying and selling houses, you know? So what do you say to, to 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 other people? Because I hear this all the time. We're in yeah. a relationship business, and then I hear, no, well, wait, we're we're salespeople. Sure. We're in the sales business. Yeah. So we get that from both angles. What, what do you? Are you a salesman or are you? The question basically is, are you a salesperson? And right. you know, the connotation of salesperson tends to be negative, oh. right, Tristan? Yeah. 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 I mean, what do you think? How would you? How would you approach that? I think that people work with people they like. And I personally don't believe in um, hard selling. I, I believe that I will know my craft and my job is to net my sellers the most money for their house and negotiate the best offer for my buyers, right? Um, now I've definitely moved into a lot of the leadership and hiring and stuff like that. So talent management is really important to me. And yet I know that I'm leading by example. And so the way that I kind of looked at it is if I was buying a house or if I was selling a house, how would I want to be treated? How would I want to be communicated with? And most people, when they go to buy or sell their house, they don't even remember who sold the house to them because their agent sucked and didn't keep communication with them, you know? And so for me, um, I, I definitely know that I'm in sales, but I think sales is a beautiful thing because if you're passionate about what you are doing and you come from contribution, like you guys, we have the opportunity to be a part of someone's life for the biggest financial decision they'll ever make. Like that's a huge it's honor. So big. It's big. Right? Yeah. So like, yeah, well, I'm in sales and I'm happy to be. It's interesting you would say that because, you know, there's a lot of talk going on in our group lately about um, how and as backwards as it sounds, it actually makes perfect sense. If you want a client for life, talk them out of the transaction. And that's a really powerful statement because think about whether whether it should fall on you or not, when a client ends up buying a house, let's say they move into it and they realize this house isn't for them, whether you like it or not, it's gonna it's gonna reflect negatively on you because you are the one that helped them purchase it. Well, so and it's, it's, sorry. Go ahead. Go, I, ahead. go ahead. I think it's just really important to, you know, your job is to guide them through the process. You're not making the decision, this is the house you should offer on, this isn't the house you should offer on, you know, this is the time to sell, this isn't the time to sell. Our job as real estate experts is to provide them with all of the options. And I always say, you know, you're steering the car or you're driving the car, I'm just kind of trying to help you steer. So my mm -hmm. job is to tell them, you know, this is what you could do to counter these terms out to net you a little more money. Ultimately, they get to make the choice. Do they have to accept an offer? No, you absolutely don't have to accept an offer. Let's just give you the options, you know? And so I think that to, to talk someone in or out of a house, that's not our business. Our business is to guide them to help take the next big step in their life. Okay. I think, I think you're right. I think, we, we, in essence, wear two hats because we do lead generate, right? So we do have that portion of it. Yeah. But once we have that established client that's working with us, at that point it becomes something completely different. And yeah, I don't I think with that. some agents never take off the salesman hat. It's like, okay, you've already got the lead. Now change mindsets here. You're, you're going to offer something else. It's relational now, not transactional. Totally. And I would advise as well, even if you think they're a, even if it's a good friend of yours, one thing that I've really seen agents make mistakes with, and I, I did it as well in the beginning, it does not matter if it is your, an, an online lead, your best friend, or your parent. Set the expectations. Do a buyer broker appointment with every single person that is your client because so many people, like referrals, they're the lifeblood of our business, right? And we want to treat them well. And sometimes when it's a friend, you might think, oh, I'll just explain the process as you go. And then guess what happens? Your friend gets pissed off at you because they didn't know how much the appraisal cost. They didn't know these fees that were coming up front. They didn't know they need to be there for just the half hour of the walkthrough with the inspector and not the entire two and a half hours. Now, you know, there's so many things so I found whether it is you know hiring um, you know new agents on your team a buyer broker appointment a listing appointment every single person should be treated like they don't know 
the system and, and you show them, you know, I, I honestly do a thing where I draw a line of, uh, take a piece of paper and I draw down, a line down the middle and I can, I say, you know what, this is what you can expect from me and this is what I expect from you. So like my buyers, I expect them to be loyal. I expect that they're not going to write offers with any other agent and I expect they're going to sign an exclusive agreement that they're going to work with me. And, and, and I tell them what they can expect from me as well. You know what I mean? That's a really good expectation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> a, a buyer a buyer broker agreement is a two way street. I mean, Absolutely. it's a promise, and I think that's why a lot of agents fall flat with trying to get buyers to sign it because it's not just saying, "Hey, can you sign this and promise to only work with me?" It's a promise between you and the buyer. It's the, it's also saying, "Hey, listen, this is a promise that I'm giving to you that I'm going to do my job, and if you feel that I'm not, you know, we can cancel it." But then at the same time, you have to do your job as the buyer and give me all the information that I need so I can help you find the right house. Totally. So and we, so one of the things we did um, with, with the class, which we'll get into, but one of the things we did is we broke each week into different parts of the business. So there is an entire week on buyers where we talk about, like I have a 92% acceptance rate on buyers offers on my team. So I go through the entire wow. process of how and why our rate is so high for acceptance and then we have an 86% um, signing rate for listings and I, and I I will tell you guys I was if you ask me about my numbers I was not a numbers person because I didn't I was like I don't know I sell houses like that was my thing right um, <laughs> But, but really and truly, like, I have big goals, right? And if I don't know where I'm at right now, then I can't know where I'm going to go because I have to be able to track my numbers. So how do you track your numbers? Is it a system, and an Excel sheet? What, what is it? Because we know different people track them different ways. Totally. Um, I, I don't know if I can share screens on this, but I have a really cool, like, we track every single lead that comes in. So when... So say, um, Tristan, say you sent me a referral through Facebook. Okay. I would have a place where you as the referring agent would go in an Excel spreadsheet, which actually all my database is through Boomtown now, so I have tags. It's just a, it's a CRM, you guys, for those who don't know what it is. Um, and by the way, people always say, what's the best contact management system? The one you use. Period. Okay. Right? <laughs> the one you're going to use, because most people don't use one um, or use it well. So... Boomtown is what we use, and now Tristan, everything has a system, right? So I feel like referrals, because it's such a big part of our business, you have to treat that really, really well. So Tristan would go in as a referring agent for me in my spreadsheet because I have a specific database um, drip campaign for my referring agents. Those of you who've referred to me know that. Um, we love Anya, and we send you brownies and a little snuggly thank you card. Um, and then uh, basically your lead what happens with that is then your lead goes into my uh, boomtown as and I can I'm more than happy to show you guys how I track my leads but um we have kind of a, a rating system for the urgency of when they're ready to purchase or when they're ready to move by you south. Can in Miami when you're teaching there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'll write it down for you. It's amazing. It literally shifted our business on how we could keep track because we had so many leads and especially if you have a contact management system like a lead platform you'll have thousands of leads and this program actually via Williams taught me it uh, she's a mega agent in Seattle um, it made it so that I was able to have all the agents on the team focus on 100 leads at any point and the conversion goes up by about 20 percent it's amazing wow. and think about difference 20% can have on your business, right? Who That's wouldn't true. want 20% more business right now? Yeah. Oh, my um, God. So, yeah. Sure, so we, we track sense of urgency. We track referring agent. And then when we close, one of question the admin will always ask the team is where did this lead come from? So we actually have a percentage wheel that shows – where our leads come from. So last year, 31 of my 123 transactions were from Facebook. Um, this year, 58% of my business is from social media, which is crazy. What? 58%? <laughs> what? Well, that's pretty huge, Rachel. Thanks. That's it's amazing, fun. Rachel. What's that? That's, a, that's incredible. Oh, thanks. I'm putting that into the comments right now. Okay. <laughs> um, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, no, um, definitely. Like that's incredible. Huh? So, how is fifty-eight percent of your business coming? What are you doing that okay. we're not? So now, I I have a couple actual visual examples. Social media, I'm so so passionate about because 
like I said before, people work with people they like and they like you. They want to know you and social media has provided us this amazing platform to be able to get your message out there to communicate with others. So I talk about um, your the way my social media works is 30% of what I post about is real estate and 70% of what I post about is personal. Now, what I would encourage people to do is to pick five things and everybody out there write one through five on a piece of paper, right? Five. So you write five things that you're going to post about. Because for me, social media had to become a business plan. It had to be a part of who I am and how I was going to lead my life, right? If this is a lead generation tactic for me, um, I had to treat it like a business. So I wrote, I put five, number, five numbers down, right? Um, and one of them for everyone, it's going to be real estate. So go ahead and write real estate down. Go now on. you have four left. Okay, thanks, T. If I had um, a piece of paper, I would do it. I'm doing it right now for the group, so go ahead. Okay, wait. So then you have four other things. Now these four other things you're going to be talking about are things you're passionate about. Those of you that follow me on social media know that I really am passionate about like fitness and health. So fitness and health is going to be one of mine. Motivational um, quotes and things to inspire others, that's one of mine. Uh, and, and so really you just you start to think about what you would comment on. What are things you're interested in? Because guess what? People work with people they like. What's up, T? What if one of your passions is Pokemon? <laughs> and, and you're going to have a whole slew of people that are going to oh be... Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm just saying. Um, but one of the things, too, with social media is I really feel it's super easy to breed... Nick and I talked about this the other day. It's really easy with social media to breed inauthenticity. Right? Think about yeah. people tend to do things to make a bigger life than they have, to appear cooler than they are, and they define their self worth by likes, comments, and, and interaction on social media. That's not what social media needs to be for if, if you're doing this for lead generation or in life, really. Um, so you will see, I mean, those of you who know me, I'm, I'm never going to post about sports. My sports post is going to be that I'm drinking wine with girlfriends in the kitchen while and, and cooked an amazing spread for my boyfriend and his buddies, right? Sports, no, sports, sports. Ryan won't turn off the football. <laughs> <laughs> for Ryan doesn't watch football. But yeah, uh, okay. I, the thing is like I'm I'm not gonna post about sports because I don't care about them. Plenty of other agents do, and I still have enough things that I talk about and that I'm in, interested in, and my, my my you know varieties. It, it's kind of wide, to yeah. where people are going to communicate with me. Now, have you guys ever heard of um, Power of a Post? No. Is that a book? No, I I, I, I okay. I don't want to say that I made it up because it sounds like something I heard somewhere, but it's really smart. So I'm going to pretend. Like all the credit, Rachel. <laughs> Just credit. Listen, it's a really great. Rachel, Rachel said, "Power of a Post." <laughs> I, like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I train on it, and I, I think that it just – it's the way that I lead my social media. Okay. So, okay, so think about the fact that you always want to be interacting with people, right? You The per, the point of writing is communicating on social media is so people interact with you. Yeah, right. So you could – if you say, okay, Rach, I'm going to do – I have my five topics. How many, how many days a week do I post? I would encourage you to post three to five times a week. So 70% of what you post about is personal. 30% is business, and business doesn't always have to be like, hey, look at my new listing. It can be how cool it is right now. I'm hosting a live webinar with Tristan and Nick of Lab Code Agents. Like, that's awesome, right? Like, By the way, Rachel, you also have a really great way of integrating personal with business in your posts. Oh, thanks, Nick. So, <laughs> I, wanted to, I want to show one of the oh, yeah. posts. I'm going to share my screen, so... Hey, Tristan, after I share my screen, how do I unshare my screen? You press that same button again. Okay, ready, guys? I'm going to shift over to your screen. Go. Which nope, one is it? It's just Nick's face. While, while you're figuring it out, I have a question. Is it yeah. working? Hey, there you are. Oh, okay. So he's going to do something for you. Okay, so one of the things that I really... Could, my social media, one thing I really believe in is um, is providing value and coming from contribution. Now, I had an experience where I, I, I actually shared it in this group, so a lot of you probably know about it, but I got called out by my business coach because I was 10 million, I'm on pace right now for 40 million and my goal is 50. So he said, hey Rach, 
you need to get your butt back in gear. You either, you know, I started my business door knocking 200 doors a week and doing three open houses a week. So he said, okay, which one of those do you want to go back to? Because you clearly need to, you know, get some lead conversion up in your team and inspire your agents. Well, I said, you know, I, I haven't done open houses in a couple of years and I don't want to give, you know, give up my weekends respectfully. Um, and so I will, I'll door knock. Well, I went and door knocked with my team. Um, a bunch of you, I posted a video. So what happened is we door knocked two hours. Um, we door knocked with 500 flyers. We ended up getting, um, let's see, it was three CMA requests. One of those is now live on the market, and then one turned into a refi. So I've got three nurtures, one live, and uh, a refi, right? So what I did is I shared the story in – on social media and told what happened because that's the thing I think is really important. A lot of times you can see someone up on a stage and you think they're so fancy and their life's so great and like, you know, from an outside view, oh wow, she got top 1,000 agents in three years. That's exciting. What you don't realize is how hard it is and how much struggle it is and how much building a team and then hiring the wrong people and because I didn't know how to lead, my team falls flat, I lose friends, like there's been so many, you know, like pluses and minuses in this. So I thought it was really important to share that I had to go back and I had to door knock. And when I did door knock, I forgot to wear the right shoes. I ended up getting blisters. So what happens is I go on social media and I share my story. I tell people what happened. Let me share that picture again, sorry. And then what I said is, is there anybody else who'd either like the script, because clearly the script worked, right? So do you want the script for door knocking? And then even further, I went and I recorded myself doing this script, telling the story on a video. And I ended up having 580 comments with agents wanting the video. So for me, what do I gain from sharing my video and my story? Like... What do you guys, why would, why would you think I would do that? Referrals. Totally reason. Why else? Just giving back to the community always helps you grow. Right. I mean, that's what we've done, and it's helped right. us grow so, so much. Lab Code Agents is a win-win community, right? And, and that's how I lead my business. That's how I lead my life, is I think I want to always contribute to others. And so 580 agents got an email from me with my video, with my script and with the flyer that I handed out, uh, and and by the way, my hope is that if they ever needed a referring agent in Northern California, Sacramento, you know, they would think of me. And in will they think of me? I don't know. But well, bottom no. line is, I hope so. But I'm coming from contribution. I'm giving something to them just for the sake of connecting. And I now have 580 agents that I've been able to give something to. And hopefully Brilliant. later on, they'll think of me. You know. And so that's how I built my social media business. That's how. So that month in the, last May, I received 19 referrals through social media. Whoa! I'm constantly hey. doing things like that. You know. Hey, Rachel. I was going to say that. You know, by by sharing in that way, I mean by giving your secret scripts or flyers for door knocking to almost 600 agents in different markets, that right there is forcing you to then up your game and make yourself better because totally. if you're going to give, I mean Tristan and I talk about this all the time and that's why um, you know one of the reasons Lab Coach is there, if you're going to give these secrets away, it's yeah. only going to make you better in the long run because you're going to have to then make yourself better to be better than the people that now know how to do it. Well, absolutely. And it, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you sharp. And, you know, it for me, like my why, I always want to inspire people to lead their best life. And I think that, you know, coming from a scarcity mindset, I would have been like, well, I'm not sharing my script or I can't give my door knocking flyer. I'll give it to people in my own market center. Because bottom line is there are plenty of leads out there. There's plenty of clients. Yeah. And not everybody's going to want to work with me. I might be too peppy for some people, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, no, never. What is the <laughs> difference between an average agent and a mega agent? What have you seen in the growth that you've had in, what, four years? Yeah. You, you know what? Honestly, it comes down to two things for me. I would say um, an, an average agent and a mega agent, it's consistency and mindset. Because people can say, oh, I want to start farming. Well, I saw a video one time and someone did farming or I went to mega camp or I went to a real estate convention and someone talked about farming and I'm going to do it. So they, you know, 
spend a couple hundred dollars, send out some flyers, and then they door knock once or twice, and then they send an email because I've received them. Rachel, it doesn't work. I don't know how you built your business. And I'm like, okay, how many times did you do it? Well, I went twice. Okay, well, I did it for six months. Like, you have to know that you have it, it, lead generation and, and building a brand and building your reputation and building a lead flow it takes time and it takes consistency. So you have to make sure you're doing the right things consistently, time blocking for them, surrounding yourself with the right people uh, that are going to motivate you and be goal oriented and push you and that, that are okay with saying, hey, you know, Nick, I know you said that you were going to be lead generated for these two hours and I saw you on Facebook commenting on all these posts. What? And <laughs> That's a blatant lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean really and, and it, it can be funny and it also can be like you know we know that what we do today we get a paycheck 90 days from now and 90 days from now we not you might not have a paycheck to put food on your kids table and that's when it gets really serious you know um, and then the other thing is mindset I think mindsets everything that whole saying if you think you can and you think you can't you're right I, I didn't have the option of not being successful because I was the only income for my family at the time. And, you know, for me, it was just that I knew that I wasn't happy at where I was at. I've, ta I've told a couple people before, but I had an experience at the low of my low um, where I had to watch a YouTube video to siphon gas out of a motorcycle which was my ex-husband's motorcycle cycle, to get into my car to get me to a showing. Like, that is no joke. Wow. Hey, have, you, have you ever met – Has she She should hang out with Barino because he had to sleep in his <laughs> Okay. At the convention that we have in Miami, yeah. you got to chill out with Barino because he was living in his car. <laughs> Barino, yeah, he was living in his car in the 80s when he started selling real estate because that's how oh, broke he was. Thanks. So we'll have this whole story of us that couldn't do anything. Oh, let's, have, let's, have, let's have both of you guys together telling you these stories about how you had to siphon gas and sleep in your car. The thing is, like, everybody who's somewhere now started somewhere else. And that's something really important to remember is that it's so easy to think that they have it easy or that, you know, they just automatically got the success. But there are so many struggles that get you where you're at. And people, success is not like this. Success is like this. You know right. what I mean? Like, it is it is messy and it's hard. And just when you think you're doing great and things are smooth sailing, your admin quits. Or You know what I mean? Like, you're always going to be challenged, literally. <laughs> I have a question about, uh, since we're talking about, you know, you mentioned, you know, when you get jump into the business, you're always you're at least ninety days. I mean, if you're lucky, ninety yeah. days in your first paycheck, right? Yeah. So, how does a new agent gain the confidence to get out there, don't knock on the doors, uh, pick up the phone, you know, reach out to their friends and family? What would you suggest? Um, and what advice do you have for them if that's how they're if they're feeling like a lack of confidence in that aspect? Yeah, I think, um, okay, wait, two things. One, Nick, is your shirt from Target? No, it's from Target. I just bought that same one for Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, I should have bought, 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 like, five because they're so comfortable. That's good. They're, like, Sorry, four side note. I promise I was listening to what you said. Okay, um, <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> Rachel, are you looking at my biceps? <laughs> <laughs> that way. Um Okay, so I would say that the thing is like when I started in real estate, I, I didn't have a buyer, I didn't have a listing, and what I did have was my two feet, and I had um, I, I knew that I needed to get some skills behind me because I didn't have the listing. So a lot of times people would door knock and they say, well, I've sold this many houses. And what I would say is don't worry about what you haven't done yet because it's not it doesn't come down to you know how many houses you've sold and what a good real estate agent you are it comes down to your skill set so if you're constantly learning and growing and coming from contribution and and building your skill set sit 52 days out of the year guys learn hang around top producers go to their classes there's so many agents out there webinars different things where you can learn build your skill set uh, when I started door knocking I would post on Facebook, come see my open house. You guys know I started this business with Matt Aitchison. He was my business partner for quite a few years. And um, we would literally post on Facebook, come see our open house, come see our open house. Now, 
it wasn't our listing, but we didn't say it was our listing. However, perception's reality. So all these people out there are thinking, like, who the heck are these blonde kids, and how do they have so much business? Well, that's <laughs> are just incredible. And then guess who they go to when it's time to sell their house, you know? And then the other thing is a lot of people don't say, oh, well, Rachel, I don't, I, you know, because now I can say, you know, I sold 123 houses, or to date I've sold 406 houses, right? That's as of right now. Yeah. Um, and so I can say that. A lot of new agents don't have those sales behind them, but guess what? You have an office, and so all you need to do is pull your office stats. So if your office sold 98 homes last month, guess what? Last month alone, my office sold 98 houses. What that means for you is my office has market share. People are absolutely looking to my office, to my company, when it comes time to sell because we're the best. Whether you're with you know Keller Williams, Kogel Banker, Remax, Intero, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is you know, you have a amazing opportunity based off of people around you to learn and to grow and to build your confidence. That's so true. That's a yeah. really good point. So uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, yeah, I was going to just go back to pulling your office stats because that's a really great one. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously your office has to be a, a producing office, totally. but it does, it does help. I mean, I'm in an office with 170 agents, and a lot of the new agents come in and they're they're really leveraging their open houses with the stats that our office has and it's really effective so don't be afraid to say like I have 170 agents in my office that I can network with we're number one in your town you yeah. know the chances of them bringing a buyer are very high type of thing yeah. um, so and, and also just quickly go to your local board so I'm part uh, I'm a Placer County Association of Realtors and also Sacramento Association of Realtors so my office I'm with Keller Williams Realty in Roseville we have 508 agents in our office and we're in the top we are the top office in the entire county wow. as well as yeah I mean so it's a tri-county area actually but yeah. if you go to your local board they usually have some kind of information for you where you'll be able to kind of see a graph or something to share you know where you're paced at in the market. So Rachel tell us a little bit about your team structure because I know a lot of people are curious about that. Yeah um, and then we do have to circle back to do power of a post because it's really important to me that I... Oh I can you want to do that it. first? No let's do power of a post first. Okay. It's just it's super first. simple but I think it's it's effective. So you know, so we said 70-30 principle, right? And then post three to five days a week. What I would say is uh, power of a post. So you can say, okay, Rach said to do three posts a week. So you could say, what a beautiful day today is. Well, Rachel said to do three posts. I did one. They're done. Well, or we know that the point of social media is to get interaction. So what a beautiful day today is. What are you doing? The point of doing social media is to get interaction. So if you ask a question, people are going to respond to you. And people like to talk, and they like to be heard, and they like to be listened to. Now, even stronger, you want to increase your power, um, go ahead and take a picture. Do a little selfie. What a beautiful day today is. Like, I mean, if you guys could see right now, like this is my view. Can you guys see that? Huh. Hold on. Let me look at my window. Yep, <laughs> it's still New Jersey. That's beautiful. Yeah, so like, I mean... You know, I would say today right now, like, and, and people, like, we talk about business and in life, right? So I, if any of you are watched my social media this week, I'm at the beach. I've been at the beach with family, and so I'm also working. So what I do is I talk about how important it is to unplug from your business life and make sure you take time with your family and you know what I mean so I'm hitting on business I'm showing I have balance in my life I'm showing a little bit of R&R &R and showing where I'm at and people relate to that and they're like some people are like I'm so glad you're taking time for you or you know what a cute how cute your parents are or whatever it is right um, and then I ask questions like how's your weekend that kind of thing and then even stronger would be a video videos are the wave of the future obviously it's where everyone's headed and the more interaction you have on site social media, the better your rankings are going to be in Google, the easier it's going to be to type in Rachel Adams Realtor and I pop up in five different links. Um, and ideally your goals with social media is to get likes, uh, shit comments, and then the best thing is shares. If any of you uh, saw at the end of last year, it would say like your, you know, your, your top posts on Facebook. All that that was was your highest ranked posts. It was your highest likes, shares, and comments. And those are the things that are giving you a higher rank your uh, your edge ranking and your um, uh, clout ranking like that's the thing that's getting you interaction and then the the saying that's really important just to kind of have this in your head don't post and ghost 
don't post and ghost. If you oh. make a post, you're not done. People are going to write to you, and your job, if this is something you're actually using to build your business, is to write back to them. And when you do write back to them, tag their name so that it alerts them you're writing back to them because it comes as a no notification to or them. Just reply, or reply to them. Exactly. Yeah. It's so important. I love that don't post and ghost because Tristan and I, you know, because of lab code agents, you know, when we make a post, oh my we God. have to make sure that we have at least 30 minutes to reply to people because there's a lot of questions, especially if we're posting about a new product or something along those lines. But definitely, if you're posting your personal page, people are going to expect to interact with you. So don't, like, don't ignore it. Go back to them. Talk to them. You know, it, it, be personable. And I think totally the thing, too, is, like, you know, it, social media, like, we didn't have this availability 20 years ago. We didn't have the reach we have now to be able to connect with so many people. And so it's just important that when you're when you're taking the time to make a post that you go back to it and you remember that just because you did one, you're not done, you know. And and people are writing to you because they want to talk to you. In the, uh, the, the webinar course, it's basically, it's going to be 10 uh, one hour webinar courses and then there's always live Q&A with me after because there's going to be things I talk about we're going to be talking about different scripts we're going to be talking about database builders all kinds of different things and I want to make sure that if somebody wants clarification needs clarification needs a flyer needs something else that I'm there for them and that's that's how I built my business is making sure that I'm there for people that I'm communicating with sounds like it has a lot to do with how you set up your business and, and what your mindset is is about because you hear all these people talking oh well you know that's Rachel Adams she can do it or oh yeah you've got time you can post so how much of this business is mindset oh my gosh you know what it like 50 percent it is so much about mindset because if I woke up today and I was like you know what there's no listings the market sucks nobody's gonna nobody's gonna call me back then how excited am I gonna be when I'm doing my lead generation calls when I'm reaching out to my database if someone asks me how the market is and I'm like, well, man, it's tough right now. Why are they going to want to buy or sell with me? They're going to want to know that we have a 92% acceptance rate, we have a system in place, and we're dialed, and that if they, when they work with our team, there's no ifs, when they work with my team, and when we get them their, you know, their um, house of their dreams, that it, it's going to be a fun process. Mindset's everything. And right. who you surround yourself with is so key. So you've got something called Mindset Reset. What yeah. is that? So, gosh, okay. I like to say that in real estate we experience the highest highs and the lowest lows, and it's usually within a matter of, like, five minutes. And <laughs> like... You know, like, well, how are today? So awesome. I got three new escrows. And then, wait a second, the lender didn't call you back or your property didn't appraise. Or, you know, there's always things that happen. And on my team, I'm the lead listing agent. And so when I walk into the office, I better be in a good mood because people are looking to me to lead by example. So uh, what happened is I was having a rough day and some things were just not going my way. And I walked into the office and I'm like, just not, not happy peppy. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like what a day and these clients and the lender and title company and I'm just like pissed, right? And my team's like, Rach, like, whoa, sister, we need to, like, this isn't going to work for anybody. And so we created something called the Mindset Reset. And what it is, is it is something that you can do that like snaps you and snaps your mindset back into like a reset, right? Like a refresher. And for me, it's the two P's and it's um, push ups and prayer. So when I am funky and my energy's off, I'll literally drop to the ground, bust out like 10 push ups, and then get on my knees and grant God uh, the grace to move forward and just ask him to do that for me. Um, and, and some of our agents do high fives, some of them, you know, do jumping jacks. It's something physical to get your blood moving and then something to kind of recenter you and move forward. Diana Kokoska, um, she's the creator of Maps Coaching with Keller Williams. She had something she did where she was on her way to the listing presentation and as she's driving, she's saying, this listing is mine if I want it. This listing is mine if I want it. This listing is mine if I want it, right? So she's setting up her mindset and then she walks into the listing presentation and she's giving it. And if she felt like she was kind of getting off track and maybe losing her audience a little bit, she would accidentally, accidentally drop her pen off the table onto the ground. And as she's reaching for it, she goes like this. 
And in her head, she's saying, this listing is mine if I want it. This listing is mine if I want it. So she gets back to the table, resumes control, and closes the appointment. So I think nice. the mindset reset's huge. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'll just put that in the note. Here. I love it. Um, something that I'm curious about is what does your normal day look like? Like, what does a Rachel Adams day look like? Maybe it's not normal. I think it's very uh, abnormal. It's probably above average, right? So what do you do? I mean, I've read, um, you know, Lost and Found in 90 Days, your book. By the way, I'm going to throw the plug out there. Rachel's book, Lost and Found in 90 Days. Um, what's the website, Rachel? It's uh, www.losttofound90.com, and the 2 and 90 are numbers. All right, repeat okay, that. Cool. Put it into the, yeah. the thing. So what is it? It's uh, the the book is called Lost to Found in Ninety Days: Your Journey to Self Discovering Ultimate Happiness, and the website is uh, www.losttofound90.com, and the two and the ninety are numbers. And uh, if you go on that website and you do losttofound90.com/slash/the-dash-program you can kind of watch a video about what it's about and really that is just the idea that there is always that there are things in our lives that hold us back from being the best version of ourselves so it's a 90 day program where you go on a journey of self discovery to figure out what those two things are and how you can lead your life in the best way kind of with authenticity and intention intention awesome so yeah. tell us about how your day how your how your day goes yeah, so I would love to tell you that I get up at 5 in the morning and I work out and I'm just like, you know, got that dialed. Uh, reality is I love sleeping in. So uh, I get up I live with my boyfriend, Ryan, and um, we usually get up around, I'd say somewhere between 6.30 and 7, usually ideally closer to 6.30. Um, we get up and we You're do really something. closer to 7 though, Rachel. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> I don't, I used to say that I was like a three-time snoozer. I try really hard to limit that. Um, so get up and, and ideally in the morning exercise, something first thing is exercise. My day goes the best. If I wake up um, around 6.30, immediately hydrate my body. So I have a rule that your two feet don't hit the floor until I drink a glass of water because your body naturally dehydrates as you sleep and water is such a foundational piece and I think as real estate agents you know a lot of us are parents and busy and there's just so many different things happening in our lives you have to make sure you take care of yourself and so I found that you know you can have as big a goals as you want to have in this world and if you're not taking care of you you're never gonna hit those goals because you only have one vessel so you have to take care of that vessel uh, so yeah. wake up in the morning we learned, that, we learned that best from Jay Papazan. Yeah. He said, uh, think about it. Think about when you're in an airplane. They tell you to take care of yourself first and then the little children. I was like, oh, my gosh, the air mask. So that's exactly what you were saying. Yeah, so true. Um, so, yeah, so I, um, you wake up in the morning and you just kind of want to set like a, 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 you know, if you've read Hal Elrod's book, The Miracle Morning, you set up what your miracle morning is. So for me, it's waking up hydrating, getting some good exercise in, uh, and then a, a healthy breakfast. And I'm really big on a healthy breakfast. I was uh, about 40 pounds overweight a couple, about a year and a half ago. And um, I, I really started to take my nutrition and my health seriously because I wanted to feel better and look better and lead a better life in all aspects. Um, so healthy breakfast and then get out the door. When I get to the office, it's usually about 9 a.m. And that first half hour is always a meeting with my admin. And then, uh, then, then it's lead generation for about two hours, sometimes three, depending. And we have theme days for our lead generation. So one day it's for sale by owners. One day it's expireds. One or two days is your database, and then one day is your free day. And usually with free day, people will do um, business to business or they're prepping for their open house that weekend. Uh, and then the the lunchtime, I have a rule that if you're going to eat, you might as well eat with someone. So I use my lunch as a uh, time to build my database. So I'm either doing a business to business connection, a past client, or a potential new agent for the team. Wow, I love it. Love yeah. It. And then, uh, there, then the afternoon is reserved for uh, the after lunch. You, I've got an hour for emails, and then I'm doing appointments. It's like 
to a T. Yeah, I mean, and obviously that's ideal, right? And sometimes right. life shows up. I do the the rule that if you erase, you must replace. So if something happens in the morning, I can say that again. If you erase, you must replace. If something right. happens in the morning and it messes up my lead generation time, it doesn't mean that I just don't lead generate that day. It means that I have to replace it later. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's really cool. So I learned it old. You, you've got a lot of things that you do now that you put in place, which are amazing. Uh, if you could go back to when you first started and say, hey, Rachel, uh, newbie Rachel, <laughs> let me give you some advice, what would that be? Hmm. What would you do differently? Yeah. You know, like, what would you have done differently? Because I remember when I started in the business, I mean, there's a ton of things I would have done differently had I known, first of all, about lead generation. Sure. You know, I mean, I wasn't taught that that's, you know, how to get business. I was always like, hey, I'm going to get my real estate license and totally. make business. So I think for me, that would have been for me, like, learn how to, generate your own leads like right from the start and leverage your sphere. Um, Tristan, what about you? Um, I would have been, it would have been to focus on past clients more yeah. because I started off door knocking, cold calling. That's what I did for the first few years. And then I jumped over into internet leads. Yeah. But never in that whole process did I focus on past clients. Totally. So, and I, and I see how strong that is to to do. I see strong agents just flourish with their past clients, and I still, you know. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, I think, like, when you start out, there's really no past clients. Like, I mean, you see, yeah, yeah. but look, you've got, a, you've got a past clients and sphere, right? Right, That's yeah, right. To. It, took, it took for me, like, five or six years to start seeing repeat business, especially from first-time buyers that after five to seven years, they sell their house again. But so, like, what's the one thing that you wish you knew when you f first started that you didn't know that you know now? Man, I think, like, uh, there's a couple of them. Like, uh, profit and loss is so big. I didn't track my money, and I didn't yeah. track where I was spending money. So I had, like, these uh, – I, I, I paid a bunch of money for a wedding ad in a my thought was and I like obviously I'm like sappy like love muffin so I'm like oh well first you get married and then you buy a house but really when you get married you're broke because you just spent all your money on your wedding so the house comes way later so I spent all this money on this really cute ad that I thought was brilliant and I never closed a deal from it and it was a sixteen hundred and twenty five dollar learning experience which at the time, and still, like that's a lot of money, and that's expensive, especially when your credit cards are maxed and you're borrowing money from everyone, including your nail person. True story. Um, and uh, and the other thing is, you know, Jim Rohn has a quote that you're the sum of the five you hang around, and right. I don't think I realized how important my environment was, and th the shift in my life came when I really, really got intentional about who I was spending my time with and the conversations that I was having and the conversations I allowed around me. I, there's so many people that are negative in this world, and uh, they don't get to be in my life. And I think uh, one of the easiest things with social media is the unfriend and block button. I have no problem doing that, even on your birthday. <laughs> You're seeing stuff that doesn't it's mess my up. my birthday. <laughs> That's how I know who, like, because I, I maxed out with the 5,000 friends a long time ago. And I would go, oh, gosh. And I would want to, you know, I'd meet some new people that were exciting, and I'd want to add them in. And so I go to people on their birthday and be like, do I know you? Nope. Unfriend. <laughs> That's the easiest way because it pops up and it's like so and so has a birthday today. Who is that person? Unfriend. Totally. Um, no, totally. And it's funny because like being purposeful with who you spend your time with. Um, that's something that I wish I had done sooner because. Yeah especially when you go to conferences like Mega Camp or Family Reunion or NAR or whatever conference you go to, Inman, um, you know, I would, now I'm more purposeful, purposeful than ever. Yes. I'm like, okay, I have lunch with this person, I gotta have a with this person, I gotta have a meeting with this person. Like, it's re you gotta be really laser focused because those are not times to goof off. They're times to grow your business and your network. It, I, I call it a who's who list. 
Right. Have a list of who you want to spend time with and set up your set your intentions ahead of time. Reach out to them. Let them know you want to sit down with them. Go on their Facebook and pull something from their bio. Comment on something they talked about. Show that you're not just this like, you know, person who who wants to be another person they have to time block to put into their calendar. Show that you you care and that you 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 know you know about their life or that you're gonna contribute in some way. I mean I, I give people copies of my book or I you know pull something from their bio and I'm like, hey I know that you said this at this point or I'll watch a webinar or something to connect with them to show that I actually have done my homework and it's worth them sitting down with me. And and people respond really well to flattery. So flatter them. Be like I'm a huge fan. I noticed you did this, this, and this. Can I sit down with you and pick your brain for ten minutes and and let you know time block it? Is that how we became friends? <laughs> was I flattering to you? No, I was like Rachel. I think you're so awesome. You're like, okay, we can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll delete someone on the birthday for you. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, she's like, I can't be your friend on Facebook till someone's birthday. I don't know pops up. They know. Um, so I want to talk about Limited to Legendary a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's your new MAPS coaching course. Yeah, this is the first out. announcement of it. I haven't I haven't talked about oh. it yet. Oh, it's exclusive. Oh, my gosh. We need some, we need some <laughs> visuals. It's from Limited to Legendary, your fast track to becoming a top 1,000 agent. And the idea is, are you ready to trade in a limited mindset for a legendary business? So it's a 10-week webinar course, and we go through um, mindset, absolutely. We go through the buyer process, the seller process, um, building your database, social media, uh, hiring and managing talent, so building a team and growing a team, um, raising your leadership lid, learning how to be a leader. We talk about how there's a direct link from your um, business success that relates to your personal development, so your personal growth, and every week there's live Q&A with me after, and you guys, I, I think, Nick, you guys know the code, I mean, they're giving you a $50 off code. Yeah, and us, everyone in Lab Coats gets 50 bucks off, we'll tell you how to do that in a minute, but you want me to show the video? Sure. Okay, Tristan, it's like a two minute video about, um, about, the, about the series, so I'm going to show it real quick. I'm gonna While you're shifting, I have a question for Rachel, somebody said, yeah. what, do, what do you eat for breakfast that's healthy? Oh, I love that question. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so I have a saying that I have uh, breakfast like a queen, lunch like a princess, and dinner like a pauper. So I, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Write that down. <laughs> um, I have my biggest meal of the day um, at breakfast, and it's because that's, your body's hungry, you've been sleeping, and I have all day to burn it off, and I got really intentional about getting in shape. I don't know if any of you saw my ab shot the other day. But, uh, I saw your ab shot. Working so hard. I thought um, it was Kristen's apps at first, but then I realized it was Rachel's. So what I do so. is I have um so half my plate in, and I'm I'm actually going to do a video all about nutrition because I feel like I finally after 31 years figured it out for myself because I'm only five feet tall so I only grow this way I don't grow this way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, uh, I half my plate is vegetables so I saute up a bunch of vegetables um, and then I do uh, about a cup of uh, egg whites that are scrambled, and I do half a banana with about a, ta a teaspoon of all-natural peanut butter on it, and um, then a cup of coffee. Oh, so I have my protein, majority of the plate is vegetables, and I do have a little bit of fruit with uh, some natural peanut butter with nut butter, and I cook my egg whites in coconut oil. Christian has a power bar and a Red Bull. Kristen, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> After. <laughs> Listen, let me show let me show the video, okay? Alright, shift over. Here's the video. Ready? Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Everyone oh, okay. get your popcorn. Are you ready to trade in a limited mindset for a legendary business? My name's Rachel Adams, and in three years in the real estate industry, I went from a brand new agent not knowing how to do anything to top 1,000 agent in the country for the Wall Street Journal. Year one in the business, I sold 39 houses. Year two was 109, and year three was 123 homes. Now, a lot of people ask how I experienced such quick growth in my business, and truly what it comes down to is a positive mindset, surrounding yourself with the right people, and just knowing that if you get the skills behind you, 
They can propel you forward to catapult you into the life of your dream. I'm so excited to present to you my Max Coaching course, From Limited to Legendary, your fast track to becoming a top 1,000 agent. Over the next 10 weeks, we're going to discuss so many amazing topics that are going to help your business in a huge way. We're going to discuss how there's a direct link from your personal growth that relates to your business success. We're going to dig deep into your database. So many people know they need to talk to their database, but they don't know the conversation to have, and they don't know what content to provide. I'm going to show you exactly what to do and give you the content to directly relate in a referral. There's so many ways that you can attack your real estate business. What I show you is kind of a mix of old versus new. Uh, I definitely still believe in a face-to-face -face conversation. In fact, one of the things we're going to go over is how one conversation can relate to 10 real estate transactions or more. And speaking of new, obviously we know that social media is the wave of the future. 31 of my 123 deals last year were directly from Facebook, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did so that you can get those referrals too. Of course, we're going to talk about open houses, the buyer and seller process, perfecting your listing presentation. There's so much we're going to go over, and I can't wait to spend the next 10 minutes with you. Sign up below and take the next step in creating your legendary business. So Rachel, it says KW Maps Coaching. Can anybody join that or no? Any yeah, anybody can join it. Yeah, okay. so it's through Keller Williams Maps Coaching, and um, definitely anybody can join. Keller Williams is a—they're uh, definitely a sharing uh, culture, and so I'm oh, fortunate. Sure. I'm what the? Of talent acquisition at Keller Williams Heck? Realty International. That might be yours. You left it on. Colleague, <laughs> <laughs> it went to the next video. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so yeah, yeah, so we're going to give you a good dollar uh, it's 395 and it's my it's is it 395 349 349 well, it's, there's 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 um, 50 bucks off that and it starts uh, September 12th is the next course so you have some time to sign up and uh, there's basically you get a workbook every week you are going to watch a video with me that's um, a series and has all kinds of cool content, and then uh, there's live Q&A after that. Nick, do we have the link for that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you, Tristan. All right, that way I can post Tristan, it up. Tristan's better at posting things while we're on webinars than me, because I always feel like I'm going to screw up. Um, so, yeah, so... Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple questions. Hold on. You have any questions in the group? Yeah. Go for it. Uh... It says, uh, I'm in my first year, so I appreciate all the advice you give. It's super sweet. What's the, why the big uh, jump from your first year, or was it your second year to your third, where you had like from 30-something? 30 to 109. Yeah, what the heck happened there? What the? Yeah, had that um, I started treating my business like a business and yes. running it yeah. instead of it running me. So I had not time blocked. I was I set I never had boundaries with clients. If they called me at nine o'clock at night, I'd answer the phone because I was so worried I'd miss out on a client. And what I found is that if I treated myself like a professional, they would too. So one thing I really encourage is setting some boundaries for yourself. If you tell your clients, so we all do our buyer broker appointments, right, and our listing presentations. And if you tell someone, hey, you know, you can get a hold of me until seven o'clock at night. And then say, for example, Tristan, you're sitting on the couch with your wife and you decide you guys want to buy a new rental property and you're perusing, you know, you have a bottle of wine open and you're looking at houses at 930 and you're like, oh, this one looks good. Let's text Rachel. So you text me knowing that I told you I would stop working at 7 and it's 930. If I text you back, Tristan, I now established a new boundary. You can contact me up till 930 at night. So oh, it's really awesome. important that, that, that you yeah. maintain your boundaries, and if you say seven, you mean seven. Um, and yeah, so I, I started to treat my business like a business, and then I, I got systems. I started. I had a buyer presentation. I had a listing presentation. I decided when I was going to lead generate. I. I in the webinar course, we talk about your four legs of a chair, and I have a way to show you what the four things that you're going to focus on that's going to change your business. We talk about business-to-business -business presentations. I doubled my business that year because of learning how to communicate with other business owners and have the right conversation, um, and that's all stuff we go over.
Wow. It's okay, so it's, the name I just want to mention Luke. about about the legendary, right? Legendary. I posted it, Tristan. I posted it. Hey, Post it for the other group. Okay, so I was gonna say that um, you know, it is so true. The second you, the second you respond to a text or pick up your phone or write an email, yeah, and it's out of your regular business hours, and you know that it's a client calling you, and you pick up the phone at nine thirty or ten o'clock. Yeah. You have opened the door. You have allowed that person to then contact you at that time. So, for example, over the weekend, I had a, I took, I was taking Sunday off, just hanging out, and you know, taking a me day. And I had a client text me around five thirty, asking a question. I didn't respond. Yeah. Um, and I responded the next morning at nine o'clock, and she wrote to me saying, "I said, I said, hey, I got your message yesterday. I, I was taking the day off. Blah blah blah." She goes, no problem. I know you need time with the family. I didn't expect an instant response. Yeah. And someone in the group said, well, it's not that hard to just write back and say, I'm taking the day off. I can't talk right now. No, because I've then started a conversation. So it is not, it's not that hard, but it's not something I would choose to do because I'm taking a me day. Yeah. And understand and that we're all human. I got a text message last night at 11.29 for someone asking how an open house went. Like, <laughs> Just no. <laughs> but, but Rachel, why don't you just respond saying, I'll tell you when I wake up. I mean, it's so easy to do. You know? I mean, texting is safe. I will tell you guys one thing that's really, really important. I Now, I did not do this previously, and it's a shift I made. When I got – so I, I worked on a – you guys and I did a ton of personal development to, to really be – kind of be where I wanted to be at in life. Be, and this is before I met Ryan, my boyfriend. And I I don't think, like, I, I worked so hard. So many people try and do different things to, like, meet the right person or get a hobby so they can, or lose 20 pounds, like, get in the right relationship. When I started leading my life and being the kind of person I was meant to be, that's when he showed up. And one of the things that we agreed on, because obviously real estate is not the easiest career to be in a relationship with sometimes, um, one of the things we talked about is we have boundaries with our clients. We also have boundaries together when it comes to my business. So we have certain times where we call it a no tech time. So it's a tech time out. And we will literally have no cell phones. We have this chair in our living room we call the love chair. And <laughs> when we come home from the day, we sit in the love chair and we talk about our day, our you know what happened, things we learned. We, have a, we talk about a high for the day and a low for a day a lot of times. But this, my cell phone, it's not, it doesn't get to be on the chair. So we take a tech time out. So just like you do it with your clients, try and do it for your personal life, true, it, as well. It will change things for you. And you're I love that. That. I'm going to get a love chair. Dude, I'm telling you, it's real comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a, a – what are those big chairs that – like the, the, the pop, pompous on chairs? Can I get one of those for the love chair? Like do you, you, you do you, boo. I'm going to get a love hammer. <laughs> um. So, Tristan, are there any other – but I do love that, though, because turning off tech is really one of my issues, and that was one of the issues that I had in my marriage. And, were, you know, it really, like – I mean, everything's fine. Don't worry. It's fine now. But technology can really take over, and you really have to think about – and when my kid says to me, my four-year-old, Daddy, put your phone down, that's like – Ouch. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are there any other questions from the group, Tristan? No, I think we covered them all. She answered a lot of questions. Cool. I'm posting, I'm posting yeah. the details to to your course. Cool. I'm, I'm making a new post. It includes cool. everything on there, and I'm tagging a lot of people. And I was going to say that Rachel is going to be one of our speakers at Lab Code Asians Fusion in South Beach. Yeah, yeah. October 26th through the 28th. Tickets are going to be on sale hopefully in the next week or so. And you don't want to miss Rachel. She's going to be teaching two breakout sessions, one about Lost to Found in 90 and one about Limited to Legendary. And it's going to be, like, phenomenal. I think I'm just going to have to, like, cancel everything that Tristan and I are supposed to do and be at those breakouts. But, <laughs> no, so you don't want to miss that. Um, but uh, Thanks for having me. No, this was amazing. Thank you so much. I love my life family. And we got so many people watching, which was awesome. So people love you, Rachel. We love you too. All right. Um, so thanks for being here. Any closing any closing statements? <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, 
Stay, I in, think, stay in school. Don't do drugs. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Uh, just honestly, th this business can eat you alive if you don't really, really protect uh, your personal life and the things that matter and the people in your life. So just set some boundaries and make sure that, you know, be authentic. Embrace who you are. If you're, you know, if you do not want to talk about politics or the different things going on out there, don't talk about it. Like, just figure out who you want to be and be intentional about who you surround yourself with, the conversations you're having, your business, your personal life, and um, go out there and get it. And hey. sign up for Limited to Legendary. <laughs> Good, yeah. Yes, do that. And Nick, we want to thank Brandon, right? Brandon, Brandon. Oh yeah. Listen, guys. Brand. Yeah, Brandon. Um. So yeah, so Brandon Bradley uh, live streamed our Facebook. He live streams all of our Facebook uh, webinars from YouTube right to Lab Code Agents. His name is Brandon Bradley. He has a company called Infinity Networks. InfinityNetworks.org. Go like Infinity Networks on Facebook. Brandon's awesome. He streams everything. Oh, yeah. to <laughs> Who's that? Did you? Yeah, it's right there. So big thank you to Brandon. You're awesome, dude. Um, we usually only give Brandon like a couple hours notice. Like, oh, we have a webinar. He's like, okay. I'll like, oh, oops. So, oops. So Brandon's awesome. Thank you. So show him some love as well. But Rachel, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Have a good day.